welcome to Esmola. Come on in. Hi, my name is Cole Sternberg, and we're here today in my exhibition, Free State, at ESMOA. And I'm going to give you a little quick tour. So Free State is the origin story of the free, my concept, the Free Republic of California. And what that is, is it's a glimpse into what a more enlightened nation could look like, complete with a new history, constitution, budget, a clothing line, activation, pages, social policy movements, and, and a bunch of other things. You can look at all of that on the web, but for today I'm just going to take you through the rooms of the museum. Normally the museum is one large room, but we've split it into three for purposes of this concept. I'm in the first room. It's in a bit of a reverse chronology. This first room is confusing to viewers when they walk in. Is it a store? Is it a graphic design office? Is it sort of a fancy canvassing office? Um, what happened in the museum? There's lots of different thoughts that could come to mind and they're all kind of correct and incorrect. My idea is that when you really dial it down, it's just meant to elicit a feeling of something big about to happen. Um, for instance, this wall features the budget, which is 54 pages and it's difficult to read in one place, let alone with half the pages upside down. But here it's in printer's proof form with the idea that it's about to go to print and be launched into the world. And the same can be said for the clothing line, the website, uh, the posters, the lawn signs, all those things in this room feel like they're just about to come to the world. The plywood is conceptually aligned with that as well. It feels like the beginning of something. And then you move into the second room where you get a much different feeling viscerally. The ceiling is lower, the walls are beige, the carpet's green. Although it's a big room, you feel a little more enclosed and the works in here are small and voluminous. So it, it feels more like a history museum or a law office. You don't really know what's happening necessarily. For me, it feels like the brain bubble of the concept and touches on many subjects from environmental sustainability to police and sentencing reform um, to international relations and human rights. The beginning documents over here uh, are consciously at, at the front and the first one is the New York Times that arrived at my home and when I was planning this exhibition and it just made me so sad. I couldn't imagine living in a country they would allow this poor man to, to pass away crossing the Rio Grande with his child. And so it's entitled Day One and that kind of launches you into the thoughts behind this whole thing. In this room, you'll, you'll find a lot of different things. I mean, falsified UN documents, falsified um, things that discuss the Vietnam War, the discretionary budget of America mainly going to war, uh, California joining NATO, an impeachment hearing ticket um, and this cabinet, which the cabinet is the audio centerpiece of the show. It normally is playing California Dreaming on loop and has a few curiosities that touch on this idea of a California dream, the positive and the negative of that. So there's, there's you know, a lot to take in in both of these first two rooms, uh, which leads you to the third room. Uh, before we leave, this is one of the fun pieces in a way. It's the fake passport for the new country. It's mine, because I had easy access to my own information. Um, but as you, as you leave this space, you're brought back into a more traditional museum environment. It's brighter, the walls are higher, you can really breathe in here. And in this reverse chronology, it's meant to feel like the ideas of freedom. At first, being, you know, getting rid of this big gate, for instance, it feels really Anglo-American and sort of brutal about privacy and property rights. It says trails in, signifying the end of something and the beginning of something else. It's also on a little bit of a slant, which I, I like as this sort of hint that maybe this is all a dream and not reality. And then on sort of the reverse side of that are a much lighter fence that's being torn apart and a slice of a California live oak that 
partially feels like a peace sign and partially a slingshot and was trimmed in order to save the tree. So, so they point to a little more aspirational idea of, of freedom. And then the most difficult thing in the whole show for me to produce is this document, which is the new constitution of the Free Republic of California. In my eyes, this is the original copy that would be under glass in a capital, theoretically. And it does, I think, a very good job of creating a legal structure that functions in a contemporary society versus, you know, a document that is not living and can't even contemplate, I don't know, gu automatic guns, let alone the internet or flight or any of these things that our U.S. Constitution had, you know, no idea would come. And then the symbol of the flag is in this room as well. I'm not personally that big on the flag worship, hence it's hung uh, not correctly or whatever portrait wise. And the colors in it are meant to reference the Pacific, the environment, peace, the, the seal does the same thing. The one rema remaining element of the bear revolt flag and the first flag of California during Mexican occupation is this red star. It just felt like a nice, subtle way to address history without having to support some of the other ideas of the previous flag. And then finally, you're left with the most quieting and positive thing, which is this Pacific Ocean rising to the horizon and the sunset. And it, the scale and the installation were done this way in order to make you feel that you're really walking into this and moving beyond our current concept of a country towards something more positive and enlightening and communal.